Let us begin our day and let us begin our celebration by blessing ourselves with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, today is the optional memorial of St. Albert the Great. He is the patron saint of philosophers, scientists, and medical technologists. So we pray for philosophers, for scientists, for medical technologists. As we come before the Lord's presence, my dear sisters and brothers, we ask for the grace of knowing the Lord more, loving the Lord more, serving the Lord more, being sensitive to the many moments each day when the Lord continues to call us and invite us to come closer to Him as He comes close to us. Let us now humble ourselves and recall the moments in our lives when we have sinned against God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you for its full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard the Lord saying to me, to the angel of the church in Sardis, write this. The one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this. I know your works, that you have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen what is left, which is going to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then how you accepted and heard, keep it and repent. If you are not watchful, I will come like a thief, and you will never know at what hour I will come upon you. However, you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments. They will walk with me dressed in white because they are worthy. The victor will thus be dressed in white and I will never erase his name from the book of life, but I will acknowledge his name in the presence of my Father and of his angels. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Laodicea, write this, The Amen, the faithful and true witness, the source of God's creation, says this, I know your works. I know that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either cold or hot. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. 
Therefore you say, I am rich and affluent and have no need of anything, and yet do not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich, and white garments to put on so that your shameful nakedness may not be exposed, and buy ointment to smear on your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and chastise. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him, and he with me. I will give the victor the right to sit with me on my throne, as I myself first won the victory and sit with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sit the victor beside me on my throne. I will, I will sit, sit the, the victor, victor beside, beside me on, on my throne. throne. He who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while the honors those who fear the Lord. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. Who lends not his money at usury and accepts no bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be disturbed. I will seat the victor beside me on my throne. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was, but he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anyone, anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In your life now, in what areas, in what parts, do you see and feel the Lord knocking, calling, coming close to you? Jesus says in the first reading from the book of Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. Note that it is Jesus who knocks on our door before we knock. Jesus comes to us wherever we are before we come to Him. He wants to meet us, to stay with us, to share Himself with us. He waits and hopes for us to let Him in. We see this taking place in our Gospel scene from St. Luke, in the story of the tax collector Zacchaeus. 
There are many things that make Zacchaeus small and stunted, aside from the fact that he's born short in physical appearance. In the eyes of people around him, there was little to admire and look up to. He was not only a tax collector, but also a high-ranking one. Tax collectors were hated by the people. They were considered traitors. They worked for and cooperated with the enemies, the Roman invaders. Tax collectors were notorious for corruption. They enriched themselves by imposing many extra charges. That is why tax collectors were seen as sinners. And perhaps because of all this, Zacchaeus had also seen himself this way and felt like this all his life, short, small, stunted. But this soon changes. Jesus passes his way and Zacchaeus climbs a sycamore tree to see him. It's impossible for him to see because of his height and the crowd. Maybe there's just too much going on in his tax collecting that crowds his life and that makes him not see. Jesus notices Zacchaeus and literally looks up to him, calls him and invites him. Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must be at your house. Notice how Jesus calls him by his very name. There is urgency in Jesus' voice. Quickly, today I must. This single encounter with Jesus changes Zacchaeus and his choices and his priorities. Jesus sees and encounters Zacchaeus right in his smallness and stuntedness, there in his limitation, in his physical and spiritual disability. There Jesus knocks on his very door, and Zacchaeus opens the door to Jesus. My sisters and brothers, we can consider ourselves too, where we feel small, where we feel short, where we are stunted. There Jesus comes to us, comes close to us, inviting us, calling us by our very name, wanting to be with us and wanting to stay with us. Let us listen to the Lord, see Him as He knocks on our door, and we're invited to open this door for Him. Let us remember where we feel small, where we feel short and stunted. Jesus comes to these very places to be with us and to give us life and to invite us to come closer. Amen. In the meeting between our Lord and Zacchaeus, we see that true mercy is the most profound source of justice. We pray as sinners on behalf of sinners, but let our prayer express confident trust in the divine mercy. We say, Divine mercy, bless us. Divine mercy, bless us. That the church may continue to welcome those who seek forgiveness and inner peace, we pray. Divine, divine mercy, mercy, bless us. Bless us. That those who run business and industry may be generous and just, we pray. Divine, Divine mercy, bless us. us. That we may be prepared to welcome the Lord whenever He comes into our lives and allow Him to make His home in us, we pray. Divine, Divine mercy, mercy, bless us. That the sick may see in their trials and suffering the redeeming cross of Christ, we pray. Divine, Divine mercy, mercy, bless us. That the dead may be rewarded with everlasting happiness in the life of the world to come, we pray. Divine, Divine mercy, mercy, bless us. We include in our prayers those celebrating their birthdays, Lovi, Narcoda, Misi Maramara, Anne Heramia, Maria Teresa Dalumpines, Jomel Caramanchon, for the healing of June Di Mayuga, Marianita Toriano, Carol Klinke, Delantar Mendoza, Andau Rondilla, and Hoson families, Linda Ferrer, and Tessie Perez. We also pray for the repose of the souls of all our dearly departed, especially those you sent to Radio Katipunan's flower and memories. For the special intention of Bobby and Marite Lavinia, Irene Pineda, and Dong Tan. And for all the intentions you have sent to our Facebook pages at Jescom and Radio Katipunan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. hear our prayer. God, our Father, 
Fill our hearts with your love. Give us your saving help when we fall and keep us always in your care. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for a good and the good of all His holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is solely right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all of that in your mercy, including Father Joseph Lee. Welcome all of them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Ignatius of Loyola, Francis Xavier, Peter Faber, and all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Before we exchange peace, let us first welcome this peace into our hearts. Let us think of the people in our life who need peace. Think of those who are sick and suffering, those lonely and afraid. Think of those you avoid and ignore, those you hate and dislike, those you need to forgive and those who need to forgive you. Quietly in your heart, name them before the Lord. Pray for their peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you. Peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. This is Jesus who knocks on your door. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, 
humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.